all I was seeing was doors opening doors opening doors opening doors opening doors opening I'm here to give language to everything he's been blowing in the name of Jesus doors open doors open doors of destiny open doors connecting one season to the other open by the spirit of the living God some of you before this conference is over you will hear that certain doors certain iron gates that have insisted on being closed by the power and the mystery of the prophetic that it is open hither and thither in the name of Jesus the son of the living God in the name of Jesus the son of the living God in the name of Jesus the son of the living God hallelujah I believe that there are people who came here trusting God for restoration you know what it means to restore to restore means to bring back to its original state I don't know who I'm speaking to but in the name that is above all names someone here under the sound of my voice an unction is coming upon you that will command a strange order of restoration a strange order of restoration for someone a restoration of your spiritual fire for someone a restoration of favor you've tasted of the goodness of God but it looked like something and an, an attack from hell just closed that door over you and for a long time you've not seen that dimension of favor but tonight it returns in the name of Jesus favor returns the goodness of God returns over your life in the name of Jesus and I'm speaking over someone who has gone through a season of strange attacks the angel appeared unto Joseph and said they that seek the life of this child there were people who sought the life of Jesus in the name that is above all names every attack over your life I come by the spirit of prophecy and I decree and declare before you it will fall like Dagon before the earth before you it will fall like Dagon before the earth hallelujah now please I want you to listen I want to speak something over your life there are things men cannot do there is a grace I'm trusting God to rest on you now I want you to listen there are supernatural things that when you see it is impossible it's beyond the realm of intellect there are dimensions of the possibilities of the kingdom that is beyond the presence of finances there are certain things that are a signature of God upon the lives of men many of you have really not experienced the help of God the assignment of help is to make things possible then to make things easy when a man provides help for you he makes things possible and he makes things easy I know what it means to be helped by God and I can tell you the man of God pastor Nat he's a testament of the help of God there's someone here struggling in life struggling in business you know that this is the strength of the flesh you've stretched your hand you've stretched whatever in the name of Jesus let me introduce to you a dimension called Ebenezer that there is a God in heaven who can assist men I stand by this unction in the name of Jesus where you have struggled by yourself in ministry you have struggled in finances struggled as a pastor let help rest upon you now let help rest upon you now let that grace that can cause a man to be helped marvelously helped of God let it rest upon you now help in ministry receive it help in your finances receive it help in business receive it in the name of Jesus Christ and Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped of God helped in ministry helped in worship 
helped as a businessman helped as a parent some of you are in uk and it is clear you are alone there is no supernatural assistance around your life you wake up early in the morning and you sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow welcome to your season of strange help in the name of jesus i say it to you welcome to your season of strange help help by god help by god that you are an ordinary man but may you experience the help of god in the name of jesus christ yahweh sabao yahweh sabao Yahweh Sabao Come on celebrate prophecy Yahweh Sabao Yahweh Sabao Yahweh Sabao Yahweh Sabao Yahweh Sabao Yahweh Sabao over your life and over your destiny find a serious prayer partner and for the next two minutes everything you are tired of that in righteousness must leave your destiny let this be your moment of aggressive prayer prayer with passion prayer with dedicated focus go ahead begin to declare that this mountain before Zerubbabel tonight and right now before Zerubbabel thou shalt be made plain are there people of prayer in Leeds prayer in UK open your mouth and begin to pray unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come every challenge every mountain every giant that stands before you at the shout of grace grace the shout of grace grace it clears the way once and for all someone is praying praying with passion praying with faith 
Shapaka Pakata Balakata Prakata Balakata Scata Bakata Prakata Balakatosh Shabranta Kaparanta Kapreskata Balakapa Rakata Prakata Balakotosh Labranta Parento Koto Prakata Balakata Rakata Prakata Balakata He that cometh unto God must believe that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Someone pray, someone pray, someone decree that thou mightest be justified. He said, call unto me and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Koinonia, pray. Command a new season. Pray. Bring the old season to an end. Pray. Open up new fountains, new possibilities in your life. One more minute. You are praying with faith in your heart. Pray with expectation. The Lord visited Sarah as he had said. The Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. The Lord visited Sarah. Come on. Your ministry cannot remain the same after this encounter. Your business should not be the same after this encounter. It's a sound of revival. It's a stirring from the spirit. You have an advantage. You have the advantage. Pray. In Jesus mighty name we pray in Jesus victorious name we pray let me speak over someone's life that these Egyptians you see today in the name that is above all names I don't care what they are called financial mountains I call them Egyptians shame and reproach I call them Egyptians diseases that defy medical attention I call them Egyptians and I come in the name of Jesus the son of the living God that these Egyptians you see today you will see them no more forever 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 in the name of Jesus the Bible says when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion it says we were like them that dream in the name of Jesus for someone you will have to pinch yourself and say am I dreaming what is this that is happening to me open door meeting and open door favor meeting favor grace upon grace help upon help in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah one last prayer and then you are seated father the dimension of grace required for the next level of my spiritual adventure I open up my heart to receive someone pray someone pray possibilities are sponsored by grace I like you to pray and cry the empowerment the engracing that must rest upon your life tonight that defines the next prophetic season in ministry in destiny that defines the next prophetic season go ahead and pray go ahead and cry go ahead and pray yesterday's bread will not satisfy today's hunger yesterday's bread will not satisfy today's hunger the manna came daily 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 yesterday's bread will not satisfy today's hunger cry for a fresh outpouring cry for a fresh anointing a fresh empowerment that responds to the new season the new prophetic season you are stepping into in jesus mighty name we pray
I'd like you to be seated but be very sensitive this is our final session together do not lose sight on what God is doing there is a mighty mighty manifestation of God's presence and God's power in this place whilst I give the charge that I'm giving tonight there are awakenings right from the fountains of your spirit for some of you you will be having visions your eyes will be open and you will be having supernatural angelic encounters visions prophetic dimensions will be opening you will be hearing sounds you never heard you will see things that you've never seen before it is what happens when his presence comes here's what i'm hearing in my spirit weep not for the lion of the tribe of judah weep not this is a prophetic word for someone you've had seasons of tears from january till now it's been for you disappointment after disappointment it looks like a door is about to open and then just when you come it closes the prophetic word for you is weep not weep not weep not the lion of the tribe of judah even the root of david is worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll thereof and i speak that weep not in the name of jesus the grace that ends tears ends disappointments let it rest upon you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I'm hearing a word that I heard in one of the um, conferences I don't know which whether it's US or UK and the picture that is coming with this word uh, the picture of the Apostles when they were disciples and they said master we have toiled all night and the word is nevertheless nevertheless apostle have applied for the job again and again nevertheless you didn't apply with this anointing on you that is coming on you now i've done ministry before and it did not work but nevertheless i decree and declare the anointing that makes it nevertheless nevertheless in spite of the economic situation in spite of the fact that you've done it again and again resulting in failure go with this anointing and succeed Go with this anointing and excel. Go with this anointing and defy standards. In the name of Jesus Christ. I hope you still believe in the power of prophecy. The speakings of the Spirit. The Lord is saying it will not delay in its manifestation. It will not delay in its manifestation. Ah, in the name of Jesus, it will not delay. It will come speedily, speedily, faster than you planned for, faster than you thought it will not delay in its manifestation by the spirit of grace i speak it over someone's destiny it will not delay in its manifestation in the name of jesus christ the lord is saying i should speak to someone it will come through the hands of strangers this is what i'm hearing it will not come through the hands of anyone you already know it will come through the hands of strangers I'm saying it to whoever has the faith to receive that it will come maybe your job maybe your helper maybe an opportunity for open doors but it will come through the hands of strangers for the Bible says strangers will feed your flock I prophesy it upon you men you do not know will schedule seasons of favor by God to your life in the name of Jesus I say it again it will not come through the hands of those you already know it will come through the hands of strangers in the name of Jesus Christ 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 
the Lord is asking me to avert the spirit of death this, if this is all we do tonight I still consider it a great meeting someone's destiny needs to experience revival in its entirety the spirit of death I don't know who I'm speaking to you see death traces men like a shadow the same way you move and then you see a shadow following you and there are many people who are right now in the valley of the shadow of death when you see a shadow it means the object is nearby the shadow of death anyone here appointed unto death that by the skimmings of hell you should not see the end of 2024 i stand by the voice of prophecy and in the name of jesus i decree and declare you shall not die you shall not die you shall not die you apparatus help them please you shall not die you shall not die in the name of jesus every covenant with the grave every covenant with hades every covenant with the spirit of death we abolish it once and for all in the name of jesus christ hallelujah there are people who are alive but they are bound in chains when he said lazarus come forth the bible says in john 11 that lazarus came forth but the man was bound in grave clothes even though he was alive he was still wearing the garment of death the garment of death can come as the garment of failure everything that cannot give you the liberty to find expression as the living is called the garment of death it's one thing for the dead to come back to life but it's another thing for he who is alive to be loosed and to be let go jesus said to come back from the life from from death was not enough he said lose him lose him lose him can mean give him a job that gives him a decent life lose him can mean let opportunities be scheduled everything that makes that you enjoy the life of god to its fullest let me speak to someone as one sent by god i decree and declare every chain that has held you down held your finances down held your destiny down i speak to you you are loose now you are loose now you are loose now in the name of jesus christ i come tonight in the spirit of moses he said pharaoh don't say at the lord god of the hebrews let my people go that they may go and serve me in the name of jesus every provision that must be made available in this season so that you will serve god effectively and efficiently in the name of jesus may that provision be made available for you made available for you made available for you for you and your children for you and your spouse for you and your church in the name of jesus Ezra chapter 6 verse 14 Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14 God wants to finish something he started in someone's life it says and the elders of the Jews build it and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo and they build it and finished it let me speak over someone everything good that your hand has started in righteousness i decree and declare by the spirit of prophecy let the finisher's anointing rest on you let the finisher's anointing rest on you let the finisher's anointing rest on you no more abandoned projects in the name of jesus let the finisher's anointing rest on you by the power of the holy spirit let the finisher's anointing rest on you in jesus mighty name we pray maximizing your destiny a call to fulfill god's purpose beloved 
Today we gather as young adults who are not only full of potential but also anointed and appointed for a divine purpose. The world is filled with distractions, challenges, and uncertainties. But the Word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Psalm 119, 105. Our focus today is on maximizing the destiny that God has entrusted to each of us. We are going to explore how we can live out our purpose and fulfill our divine calling. Number 1. Understanding Destiny in God's Kingdom Before we can maximize our destiny, we must first understand what it means in the context of God's kingdom. Destiny is not just about personal success or achieving worldly goals. It's about aligning our lives with God's will and purpose. Jeremiah 29.11 reminds us, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. This scripture highlights that our destiny is God-ordained. It's not something we create, but something we discover as we walk closely with Him. Number 2. Embracing Your Identity in Christ To maximize your destiny, you must embrace your identity in Christ. The world will try to define you by your past, your failures, or even by the standards of success it upholds. But in Christ, you are a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17 your identity is not based on what you do, but on who you are in Christ. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. This means that God has already prepared a path for you to walk in, one that is filled with purpose and meaning. Number 3. Seeking God's Will Through Prayer and the Word Maximizing your destiny requires a deep and consistent relationship with God. Proverbs 3, 5, 6 advises us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. Prayer is the vehicle through which we communicate with God, and the Bible is the roadmap for our journey. When you spend time in prayer and in the Word, you align your heart with God's will and gain the wisdom needed to make decisions that are in line with your divine purpose. Number 4. Overcoming Obstacles with Faith and Perseverance Every destiny comes with its challenges, but with faith and perseverance, you can overcome them. James 1 2, 4 encourages us, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. The obstacles you face are not meant to break you but to build you. They are tools in God's hands to mold your character and strengthen your resolve. Number 5. Surrounding Yourself with Godly Counsel one of the keys to maximizing your destiny is to surround yourself with people who will encourage, challenge, and support you in your walk with Christ. Proverbs 13.20 says, Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. The company you keep can either propel you toward your destiny or pull you away from it. Seek out mentors, friends, and leaders who will speak life into you and guide you according to the Word of God. Number 6. Serving Others as an Expression of God's Love Our destiny is never solely about ourselves. It's about impacting others for the kingdom of God. Jesus himself said in Matthew 20, 28, The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. One of the greatest ways to maximize your destiny is to serve others. When you use your gifts, talents, and resources to bless others, you reflect the love of Christ and fulfill the purpose for which you were created. Number 7. Staying focused on the eternal perspective. As young adults, it's easy to get caught up in the pursuit of temporal success, career achievements, financial stability, or personal accomplishments. However, maximizing your destiny means keeping your eyes on eternity. Colossians 3 verse 2 instructs us, Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. When you live with an eternal perspective, you make decisions that have lasting value. You invest in relationships, character, and the advancement of God's kingdom rather than in things that will eventually fade away. Number 8. 
walking in obedience and faithfulness. Finally, to maximize your destiny, you must walk in obedience and faithfulness to God's calling. Luke 16 verse 10 says, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. God looks at our faithfulness in the small things before He entrusts us with greater responsibilities. Obedience is not always easy, but it is necessary. When God calls you to step out in faith, do so knowing that He will equip you for the task and reward your obedience. Conclusion Beloved, the time to maximize your destiny is now. God has placed you in this generation for a reason. You are here to make a difference, to shine His light in a world that desperately needs it. Don't settle for anything less than God's best for your life. Remember that your destiny is not about achieving worldly success, but about fulfilling God's purpose for your life. As you leave today, let the words of Paul in Philippians 3 verse 13 to 14 resonate in your heart. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Press on, beloved. Maximize your destiny and let your life be a testament to the power and glory of God. Amen. Please don't hesitate to like and share our content. You can follow us on all of our social media platforms at Believers Global TV. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.